The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. King Herod heard about Jesus for his fame had become widespread and people were saying, John the Baptist has been raised from the dead. That is why mighty powers are at work in him. Others were saying he is Elijah, still others he is a prophet like any of the prophets. But when Herod learned of it, he said, it is John whom I beheaded. He has been raised up. Herod as the one was the one who had John arrested and bound in prison on account of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip, whom he had married. John had said to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Herodias harbored a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but was unable to do so. Herod feared John, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man, and kept him in custody. When he heard him speak, he was very much perplexed, yet he liked to listen to him. Herodias had an opportunity one day when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers, his military officers, and the leading men of Galilee. His own daughter came in and performed a dance that delighted Herod and his guests. The king said to the girl, Ask me whatever you wish, and I will grant it to you. He even swore many things to her. I will grant you whatever you ask of me, even to half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What shall I ask for? Her mother replied, The head of John the Baptist. The girl hurried back to the king's presence and made her request. I want you to give me at once on a platter the head of John the Baptist. The king was deeply distressed, but because of his oaths and the guests, he did not wish to break his word to her. So he promptly dispatched an executioner with orders to bring back his head. He went off and beheaded him in the prison. He brought him in the head, in the head on a platter and gave it to the girl. The girl in turn gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. Dear friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. The first reading and then the Gospel are very much connected in a very peculiar way. The letter to the Hebrews gave us an instruction that to continue whatever it is that good, something good that we have been doing in season and out of season, in good times as well as in bad. Indeed, we have already gone through a year of this pandemic, and yet there are many things that have changed. There are many practices that have evolved and yet, we know very much that the fundamentals, the basic values, remain the same. In the letter to the Hebrews, the instruction is, continue. Continue what? Continue loving one another. And in this time, we are given, we are thrown into a situation wherein we are not simply given an opportunity to love in the usual way, but to love even to the extent of hurting a lot, even when we are also in the times that we are reeling from the pain and the difficulty. And yet, it's still the same. Continue doing good in season and out of season. Continue becoming or being hospitable. More than ever, you have to open your arms, you have to open your houses, you have to open the things that you have, even to strangers. And the meaning of the word hospitable was taken to a, another notch, to another level, to be hospitable. Our human tendency is to be hospitable only to one who are close to us, to one who can repay us that good. But in this time, 
the challenge is to put that hospitality to another gear, to another level. And we're being asked to continue doing that. We are also being asked to continue in our fidelity, with our commitment to one another, with our commitment to, to whatever life that we are in. There is even a saying, wherever you are, continue to be there. Whatever you are going through, there will be people who will continue to help you. Wherever you are, be there. That is our commitment. And also, in the end, remember that many things will change, but the God who is with us, unchanging, semper idem, always the same, always lovable, always loving, always generous, always suffering for us, which remains the same. The God yesterday, the God today, and the God tomorrow. And my dear friends, the gospel is the test of whether we are continuing in that path that the letter to the Hebrews have instructed us. In the life of John the Baptist, that's the true test of whether we are continuing along this path. John the Baptist spoke truth to power. He did not mince his words. That's wrong. And when you do that, sometimes it keeps us on our lane. It mutes us. It keeps us afraid. Baka kung ano yung mangyari sa akin, baka balikan ako, baka naman sabihin sa akin, look who's talking. Clean first your own backyard before trying to make a critique. But John the Baptist spoke truth to power. And that's how we continued his being a prophet. In us, we are already more than a year into this pandemic, we don't know yet when will be the end. Yet the letter to the Hebrews reminds us, continue the good things that you've been doing. Just remain faithful. Just remain persistent. Remember that the God who is with us, who came for us, who suffered for us, remains the same yesterday, today, and then tomorrow there's still something the same. And that the something the same is something that we can hold on to. And it is something that we're going to see us through in this difficult moment.